let's install Minecraft server on a Synology NAS. I'm going to start by Googling ITZG. Um, this is a Docker app that was developed by a man named Jeff Bourne, I believe. But it's how most people run a Minecraft server if they're using Docker. So if I just click this first link, it should go to his GitHub. And then under About, I can see another URL. I'll just click that. And this is going to take me to docker minecraft Dash server dot read the docs dot io, which is dot the longest URL I've ever read off. I'm gonna scroll down to where it says using Docker Compose, and I see this block of code here. I'm going to copy that. I'm gonna go back to my Synology NAS, and then I'm gonna open up Container Manager. If you don't have Container Manager, just go to the Package Center and search Container Manager, and you can misspell it by quite a bit, it seems, and it will still pop up. And then you can just click it and install it. If it's not showing up for you in the packet center, that means that your model of Synology NAS does not officially support Container Manager, but it's definitely worth Googling to see if other people have gotten it to work on your model because odds are it will be able to run it. It's probably just as simple as clicking manual install and then just using the official installer from Synology's website. I think that you can just download it there, but I don't know. I've never done it. So then I'm going to now click on Container Manager and let's start this project up. There are no services created. Not for long. First, I don't normally do this, but now I'm going to go to the registry and I'm going to pre-download this. You don't have to do this step, but it might save you a little bit of time. So I'm just going to type in Minecraft in the registry and ITZG slash Minecraft will be the first one that pops up. And I'm going to download this item. If you need to download a Bedrock server or if you need to launch a Bedrock server instead, you can download the... I oh, Let me... Type in Minecraft again. You can download the itzg slash Minecraft slash Bedrock slash server, and that will work for you. You're just going to use a different block of code. You just Google itzg um, Bedrock, and his GitHub for his Bedrock version will pop up. Scroll down to where it says Examples, and then you can just click this docker-compose.yaml file here, and that is the block of code you're going to use. All right, so let's go back to the NAS, and then under Project, let's... Hey, download it successfully. Awesome. Let's create a new project. I'm going to call this one Minecraft-Java-Cool. Dash dash, mm, you can call it whatever you want. Doing cool because today I'm wearing a pretty cool hat. And then for path, we want to create the path where we want this all to go. So that's going to be all the data files for this Minecraft server as well as this docker-compose.yaml file. So I'm going to click on File Station. I'm going to go to my Docker share and create a new folder and call it Minecraft. Craft dash Java dash cool. And then that'll be set. So I'll now set path under Docker, Minecraft dash Java dash cool, select. And then for source, instead of uploaded Docker Compose YAML, I'm going to create one. And now I'll just paste in that block of code that I got from ITZG's website. IZ, ITZG. Yeah, I'll just paste that in here. ITZG. I think I got it right. And this is pretty much good to go. I'm going to make one change here, um, one addition. Under Environment, where it says Eula True, I'm going to hit Return, because I'm just going to go to the next line and add in this line of code. And it's going to say type, colon, space, open quotes, paper. And then down here, there's a little notice. Attach the relative data directory of the container's data path. What this is saying is basically... To the left of this colon, it wants the path of the data folder, which is where all your Minecraft data, all your Minecraft server data information is going to be stored. So I'm going to click on File Station and go back to that Minecraft Java folder I created. I'm going to create a folder in here called Data. And now that is created. So you see where there's a period here? That basically just means it's kind of shorthand for saying, hey, whatever folder I'm in, I'm looking for a data folder. I could have also gone to File Station. Blah, blah, blah. I could have gone back to that data folder and hit properties and just copy that uh, that file location and I could paste that there and it would still work and it would be the same thing but I'm just going to use dot data for now and then to the right of the colon you don't need to worry about that that's for docker and now I will hit next I'm not going to set up a web station next and then start the project once it is created I'll click done and this should go by pretty quickly because it was downloading in the background so yeah the Minecraft server is going and it is starting up. So now it just it takes a little bit for it to get going. I'm going to hit close. <clears throat> I'm going to go to container here. And I know this is a little confusing that there's a project for Minecraft and a container for Minecraft. Basically, the project 
is something that's kind of easy for me to go in and edit. And the container is like the program that it downloaded. Some projects might have multiple containers. So in this case, we only have one container. I'm gonna click on it though, and then under action, I'm going to click open terminal. And all this is gonna do is show me what's going on in the Minecraft server. So it's gonna take a little bit to start up, but I'm just gonna wait for this to create its world. You'll see everything that it's doing. Once it's done creating the world, that's when I can hop into Minecraft and actually join in the server. So I'm gonna shut up here and come back when the world has been created. Now we've got preparing level world. All right, I think my server is up and running. Let's let's try it out here. Go to multiplayer, add a server. To access my Minecraft server, I'm just gonna type in the IP address of my Synology NAS. And if you don't know the IP address of your Synology NAS, you can actually just come in here. I'm gonna exit out of the logs real quick. Up here where it says widgets, <coughs> cough break, sorry. Click widgets and then make sure that system health is checked. And then LAN1 should be the IP address of your Synology NAS. So you can see here for me, it's 192.168.8670. Yours is different. That was not for you. But if I come in here, I'll just type that same address in here. I'll call this Minecraft Java Cool. And I will hit Done. And my server's up. Let's double click and hopefully it works. It's encrypting, so you can't join in. And hey, there we go. We're in a Minecraft server. There's couple things to note here, though, because... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, cough break. Still getting over a cold. So you'll notice if I try and type in any commands, like let's say I try and type in mm, difficulty, won't let me do, or game mode. That's a good one, because you might want to switch between survival and creative. I can't do that here. That's because I'm not set up as an operator, so I'm going to do that now. I'm going to move my Minecraft server out of the way. And while my Minecraft server is running, I'm gonna come in here into container, right click the Minecraft Java Cool um, container and hit bu 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 open terminal. Back to where I started, I should have just stayed here. And then I'm going to type in, I think I need to wait for it to load things up. Is it gonna load things up? No, I can type, okay, I'm gonna type in help. And if you type in help, you see it gives you all these options here that you can do. And the one that I'm looking for is called op, a Mojang provider command. That's not very helpful, not, not descriptive Mojang. I'm gonna type in forward, no, not forward slash. I'm just gonna type in the word op and then type in your username. So whatever your Minecraft username is, and this will make you an admin to your server, which will allow you to change a bunch of settings within the game if you ever wanted to do that. So I'll type in mine, which is volume data 21, obviously. And if I go back to the game, it should say that it made me an operator. So now that I'm an operator, I could type in, for example, game mode, space, and then creative. And then I'll hit tab, and now I'm in creative mode, which means I could fly around and do a bunch of other cool stuff. I can also change the difficulty in here. So difficulty, I think by default, it's by default, your server's on easy. So if you wanted to change it to normal, you can just select normal. I'll hit tab. And now the difficulty has been set to normal. So I'm just gonna exit. Now that my project is stopped, I'm actually gonna create a second server. I can't run them both at the same time. So here's kind of the, well, actually, you know what? Let me, yeah, I'm gonna create a bedrock server real quick. So if you're trying to do the bedrock server, I believe you can actually look through these documents here. And there's some sort of configuration where you can let a Java server be accessed by people playing on bedrock. But if you're really intent on making a bedrock server, again, just come back to the bedrock GitHub. So ITZG bedrock should be the first one that comes up. Examples, and then Docker Compose YAML. And you can copy this code here. And then I'm going to create a new project and call this Minecraft Java Uncool, because I got beat in fantasy football the other day and someone described my reaction as uncool. Um, I'll have to create a folder for that again, so I will create a folder in the Docker share called Minecraft Bedrock Uncool. And then inside of there, I'm once again going to create uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm once again going to create a data folder. So I've got my data folder in there. So now I'm back in Container Manager. Back in Container Manager, so for path, I'm going to set path Docker. This will be the Bedrock Uncool folder. And then let's create a Docker Compose, and I'll 
paste in that bedrock stuff. So I still wanna make two changes here. First, where it says volumes BDS, I'm gonna delete this. I don't want that because I want to know where my data folder is and I want it to be in the same folder as this Docker Compose YAML file. So I'll hit dot forward slash data and now it's just gonna use that data folder that I created a minute ago. And then for environment, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before where I add a type, open quotes, paper. And that's gonna launch a bedrock server for me. So I'll hit next, next, done. That one's gonna take a little bit because I did not pre-download that bedrock container. But anyways, I think I can just close this up and it'll, it'll do its magic. <clears throat> so now that you've got, hey, oh, that was actually much faster than I thought. So now I could access that project I can access that server doing the same thing. All I have to do is type in the IP address of my Synology NAS. A couple of things here. One, because you're on a Synology NAS, they are not powerful machines. So you could, there are ways of running multiple Minecraft servers at the same time, but I would really think, do you want to do that? Because <clears throat> your Synology NAS is probably, it'll be fine running one server, but running multiples, depending on what model of NAS you have, might get a little bit tricky. Two, we can actually make a couple changes to that YAML file. So if I double click on the Java, if I'm in project, I'm gonna double click on the Java project and then click on YAML configurations. And as long as it's stopped, you can see I've got the start button here. So that means that it stopped. If, if it was started, I'd have to stop. I can make changes in here. That's not a good change. That's not gonna mean anything. But for example, if I wanted to set the difficulty in here, I could do that. I could just type in difficulty and then I could type in normal. And now this is gonna start off on normal. Now I can still make changes as an operator or an admin because I set myself as that in the log, but this is just another way of doing that. And if you're wondering, how do I know what I can and can't do? Just go back to IT, <coughs> IZTG? ITZG's website. And you can come over to where it says variables. And then variables will list all the different changes you can make. You can set max memory, ba -ba -ba. a type, you can add a message of the day, difficulty, you can add custom icons. There's a lot of stuff you can do. And on his list to the left will be the default. So by default, it only allows one gig of memory. So if you wanted to, you could add two gigs. Four gigs is probably the max you would need. And that's probably for a lot of players, but I like my service to be around two gigs. I think two to three gigs is pretty good if you can spare it. Um, and yeah, so if I wanted to change that, you know, it says name memory. I would just add memory to this environment. So I'd type memory and then just format it the same way as everything else. And then by default, what did he have? It's at one gig, I'm gonna copy that because I wanna format this exactly the same. So one gig, so if I wanted two gigs, I could just change that to two gigs and I've got two gigs of data. Um, but yeah, these are very, this is a very thorough documentation. There's a lot you can do here. There's a lot of things for mods and plugins. The other thing that I want to address was I made this, I did that type paper. So I'm gonna click types and platforms. You can see that there are a bunch of different server types. Paper, you can read the description here. It's used by a lot of, at least a couple years ago, I haven't kept too much up to date, but it's used for a lot of Minecraft servers for lower power uh, machines. So if you're running this on a Raspberry Pi, for example, you'll probably choose paper. And I think Synology is there too. So I don't think it changes the game much, if at all. It's just supposed to optimize stuff so the server runs faster. If you were to just delete the type equals paper, it would just run the default version of Minecraft. The only slight, slight, slight downside to running something like paper is that I don't think you'll get the latest updates as they come, but paper, it's, it's pretty big and it's updated pretty frequently. There you go, that's how you do that. Also, now would be a great time. I'm not gonna go too in depth on the following points I'm gonna make. You're not running a Minecraft server. So if you're running this and playing with a bunch of friends, they're relying on you to keep the server safe. So in the Minecraft, let's go to Minecraft Java Cool here. We can look in this data folder and see we've got all the data for this world. That's where it's all kept. Now is a good time to learn something like snapshots. So Synology can actually take your Docker share and basically take a snapshot of it daily. So let's say your server was hacked or you did something and you wanna go back a day or two, snapshots could help you fix that. And then there's also hyper backup. So you could back up your data folder to, let's say you got Google Drive or Dropbox or just an external hard drive. It can make daily backups. And the nice thing about a lot of these Synology backups is they don't take up that much space. Back up your Minecraft folders. The best way of doing that is automating it, just using something like snapshots, which if you just look in the store, oh no, should've been there. 
Snapshot? Maybe it's not plural. Snapshot. Just look up snapshot replication and hyper backup. A lot of good YouTube videos on those. The other point, I know you're thinking, how do I share a Minecraft server to my friends and family or enemies or whoever I want who are not on my local area network? If they try to type in your Synology NAS IP address, but they're not in your home network, so let's say you've got a friend in another city and he wants to play on your Minecraft server, you're gonna have to do one of two things. The first way of doing it is pretty easy and it's the most secure way and it's definitely gonna be the recommended way. And that is to use a VPN. The second method is not as recommended, but it would be through port forwarding. Again, I'm not gonna go super in depth on this, but if you wanted to do the VPN route, all you have to do is go to the package center and download a program called Tailscale. Tailscale is a VPN service. It's very well known and trusted. <clears throat> so you would install it on your Synology NAS. It'll probably make you go to tailscale.com. It's gonna make you probably create an account and you'll be able to add different devices to your Tailscale account. So in this case, you'd probably just download Tailscale add your Synology NAS, and your Synology NAS will show up as a device. And then you can right-click it in the Tailscale app and share it with a friend. And then your friend will be able to download, they'll have to download Tailscale, create an account, log in and everything, but they'll get that shared device, and then Tailscale will give it its own Tailscale IP address. So all they'll have to do is type in there the Tailscale IP address that you shared with them, and that's how they can connect to your server. Sorry, that's not a real in-depth explanation, but it should be pretty easy to figure out. The other easiest way that I think a bunch of people would not recommend, I don't know, it, it depends. It's how secure, how, how good are you feeling about your security? And that is to, so you would open up port 25565 on your router. Um, you can see here port 25565 is the second port number, first and second port number here. You would open up port 25565 on your router, point it at your Synology NAS, and then all you'd have to do is go do a Google search for whatever your IP address is and you would give your friend that IP address, and then they can enter your Minecraft server. I would definitely Google security concerns on doing something like that. I don't think it's gonna be recommended by too many people, although a lot of people do it. A lot of people feel like it's safe and it's all right. Um, but just remember, you're opening up, you've now opened up your network to the world, but you've also opened up your Minecraft server to the world. So that means anyone on earth can get into your Minecraft server. So that's a good time to learn whitelisting. You can actually, I think you can just do that in game. That's right, because I closed down my server. In the game, though, you should be able to figure out how to add a whitelist. You can actually do it in the Docker Compose as well. And if you don't know what whitelisting is, it's the opposite of blacklisting. Instead of having a list of names of people that cannot enter your server, you're just going to make a list of people who can enter your server. So, yeah. In a Compose file, a text block can be used to improve maintainability, such as whitelist. So you would just copy this and paste it into the environment here. It's gonna give me some errors because that did not format correctly. I'm just going to do that. Okay. And then I would just replace these usernames with people that I want whitelisted. So I could just whitelist the Minecraft usernames of any of my friends that wanna join this server. So that's a good way of keeping anybody out of your server that you don't wanna use. You also don't have to do it in here. You can do it in game. It might be a little bit easier to do it in game if you set yourself as an operator. You can also set multiple people as operators. So you don't have to be the only operator on your server. But that is my convoluted explanation of how to run a Minecraft server on a Synology NAS.